outside for a spell and breathe in deep. Mm, the weather is absolutely still. Ooh. The sky is crystal clear. It's like the forest is quietly breathing water. Okay. Oh, I didn't read that other manuscript page, did I? Oh, Ooh, missing page. Oh, I missed one. Oh, shit. I heard them before I saw them, swooping down from the sky and screeching as they came. I spun around just as the cloud was upon me. For an instant, I stared into a hundred dead eyes, black pearls glittering in the darkness. I raised the flashlight and the swarm exploded like fireworks. Feathers burned, turned into ash. I couldn't hear a scream above there. I should listen to the radio as well. At first, I kept finding the pages as if by accident. The book I couldn't remember was either a terrible and true prophecy or an act of creation that had rewritten the world. I began to hunt the pages feverishly, for they held the answer to the mystery. With it, I could save myself. With it, I could save Alice. Alice is already gone, man. Alice is gone, never to come back. The gas station was closer now. It's light welcoming in the darkness. Oh. Stucky's still running around. Jesus. Okay, so I can't just sidestep them things. Oh, I thought he was gonna do it. Oh shit. God damn it. <laughs> oh, we are way back. Oh, uh, no, we're not really. Don't know. Well, I was just outside for a breath of fresh air, and <laughs> what a night. I, I know most of you are probably in your beds by now, but if you're still up and around, take a moment. Step outside for a spell and breathe in deep. Mm, the weather is absolutely still. The sky is crystal clear. It's like the forest is quietly breathing along with you. Do listeners know I'm I'm a night owl, and it's on nights like this I wish I wasn't cooped up in the studio. Uh, makes an old man like me wish I could just roam wild. <laughs> but here I am, and it would keep you company all night long if I weren't. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm not the only one staying up late. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, Pat, it's Maurice Horton. Hello, Maurice. What are you up to? Well, I was just taking Toby on his walk. Oh, when you use it, it does it faster. Uh, when you hold LT. Probably a rabbit. Sure. Toby loves rabbits. Well, sure. Anything yep. That, you know, Just a rabbit. And Toby's a friendly oh, shit. Okay. Press an X to do everything. Okay. The gas station was closer now. It's light welcoming in the darkness. Paul makes <clears throat> the best dogs in the street. Barry Burster is the best with no coat. Monster dog is second best. The famous dog is. <laughs> Mm. 
It's a flare gun to make light or get people's attention. It's a big light boy. I think it's like a... Um, I want to say it's almost like... Shit. A grenade? Like an RPG. RPG light bomb. TV in the gas, the gas station's garage. It was dark Ooh. and quiet. The place was a mess. It looked like someone trashed the place or that there'd been some kind of fight. Light spilled into the room through an open door at the back, and I made my way toward it. Without any warning, I was blinded by a bright light. An old portable TV on the shelf had come alive by itself, and possibly I could see myself on the screen talking like a madman. Ooh. So, is that actually what's going to happen then? When I get into the, uh, the garage, the garage, petrol station? Petrol station? Garage? <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume it is. I'm going to assume it is. Another flag on. Okay, okay. Ooh. <clears throat> Did you, um. Shit. Oh shit, I've still got my flare is Oh god damn it. I was alright. Didn't really mean to do that. Uh, uh, this, uh, this game is really about the story. You really need to get every part you can. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to explore and stuff, you know what I mean? And the, to the story does seem kind of intriguing. Like, I'm getting, like, um, I'll take a dual-wielding shotguns. Like, I like that. Okay, got too many batteries. Okay. That's fine. Ooh, TV. Science. Twilight Zone. It bestows immortality on those who advance it to elevate all of mankind. Newton. Einstein, Sagan, princes among men. But the price for such a legacy is steep indeed. In Night Springs. Tonight's episode, A Quantum Suicide. A Quantum Suicide. Wow. It would take a courageous man to change the script. Having called a press conference, Dr. Barclay Colvin is about to demonstrate that very courage. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, I am Dr. Barclay Colvin, and I'm glad so many of you could join me here at the Moorcock Institute. Tonight, I'm going to give a practical <laughs> Moorcock Institute. The many <laughs> interpretation. As you can see, this is a loaded 9mm pistol. Jesus. It be part of a thought experiment. And now, a real experiment. Known as a quantum suicide. Did he say suicide? Is that a real gun? 
He's kidding, right? Please, please, stay calm. There is no risk. Observe what happens when I place the weapon against my own forehead. Now, you might think this round is merely a dud. Not so. Observe the flower pot. And yet, I myself cannot be harmed with this gun. With each pull of the trigger, two new realities branch off. One in which the weapon didn't fire, and one where it did. With my machine here, I have ensured that this reality is always the former. I have bestowed upon myself quantum immortality. Under no circumstances can this gun kill me. So wait, wait, wait. What you're saying is that every time you pull the trigger, in another reality, you die? You die. Yes, yes, of course, but that's completely trivial. There's an infinite number of things that could happen at any moment, and they always do happen somewhere. The point is, this one thing did not happen here. You're insane, Colvin. Insane? Insane? Hey, was this thing supposed to be plugged in? I stumbled on it. You fools. Gaze upon quantum... Oh, is that his computer? Oh, no, he's going to die, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Poor, poor Dr. Colvin. Felled by his own hubris or the ignorance of the masses. Perhaps he should have left the crate unopened. The decaying atom unobserved. Curiosity often kills the cat in night springs. <laughs> Jumping through galaxies. I like the sound of that. Even if we're not, I like the sound of that. <laughs> the cabin on Cauldron Lake? She asked. The sheriff looked at me suspiciously. The early morning light flooded through the office windows. I would probably never have gotten out of the woods alive without her help. But I couldn't tell her the truth of what I'd faced the previous night. She'd think I was lying or crazy. She'd lock me up, and she wouldn't help me find Alice. <laughs> Jumping through the eyes. It's almost like... Um, what kind of vibes am I getting? I'm almost getting like Donnie Darko kind of vibes. A lot of ammunition, like. <laughs> the birds, Stucky. Come on, Stucky, bro, don't do this. Oh shit. Oh my god. Holy shit. Alright. Was not was not prepared. Oh, you can't explode the boxes.
Oh, where are you going? Okay. Oh, shit. Come back. Come back. Ay. All right. Stucky's body vanished, leaving behind only a lifetime of nightmares to come. Assuming I'd reached the lights at the gas station alive. So, big fight due to the amount of ammo. Yeah, it's a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? Uh, those boxes aren't red enough. Which one? <laughs> Which ones, Jonas? These ones? Or these barrels? Can can you explode these? God damn it! No. All right. Batteries. Uh, did I pick up the batteries? I did not. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll pick up some more of this because I just wasted a load. Trying to explode that battery. Nice. The yeah, barrel, even. Okay. Go. Ooh, thermos. Oh, there you go. Seeing if there's any yellow things around. Doesn't look like it. Ooh, the big deer. I recognized the parade float I had seen in Bright Falls when I first arrived with Alice. Okay. After the insanity I had just experienced in the darkness, the lights of the gas station felt comforting. At least for a moment, the sane world reasserted itself. Oh, we've got to get ready for the uh, the TV turning on. The deer fest had been two weeks away when we arrived. If the day count on the banner was right, I was missing a whole week between the night we got here and now. A whole week. The garage was a mess. It looked like someone had trashed the place, or that there'd been some kind of fight. Ah, right. TV, of right. course. Outside, there's only darkness. Outside the cabin, outside the story, there's only darkness. I can feel her presence in the dark. Just now, I could smell her perfume in the room. I'll reach her, I'll fix it up. I'll bring her back. The story will come true. If I stop, she's lost. I don't believe this. It'd been what? me on the TV, talking crazy. Was I losing my mind? Something about him writing the story so he can save Alice? And then if he stops, he won't be able to? Raffle tickets, fishing competition, pie contest, and a surprise competition to live music. For the children, and book to Charlie. And Montgomery, the mystic's amazing phantasmagoria. Don't miss the legendary DFS parade. Right. Oh, no, can't go out that way. Okay. Get some snacks now. Ooh, that's a map. Pie contest. Not a big fan of pie. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Oh, <laughs> oh man. 
I'm not gonna say what well, I just to thought. Inside the gas station to find a phone to call for help. Oh, I'm looking for a phone. Ooh, manuscript page. Almost missed that. Okay. Stucky spat in the garage. Like apple pie. Shake the cobwebs from his head. Ever since the couple never showed. No, I'm not a fan of apple pie. I'm more a fan of like meat pie, like steak pie. Stucky looked up and stared as his brain tried in vain to process the horror before him. He stumbled back, knocking over a can of oil. A black pool spread across the floor while he struggled for a brief moment, then let go as the unrelenting darkness engulfed him. Oh shit. I mean, Stucky's, that's, Stucky's going to appear again then, right? Phone. Find a phone. Okay, it's got to be one around here somewhere. Hello? Oh, there's a phone. <laughs> Not your thing. But you like Apple Pie though, right? I missed the page a while back, yeah. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Oh, thank God, Sheriff. Sheriff Sarah Breaker, you are... I'm Alan Wake. Oh, listen, I was in a car crash. My wife, Alice, she's missing. Calm down, Mr. Wake. We were staying in a cabin on the island, on Cauldron Lake. There's no island on Cauldron Lake. Not since the big eruption in the 70s. Please, I can take you there, okay? You look like you've taken a pretty bad knock to the head. <laughs> Are you okay? Listen. We'll figure this out. Please get in the car. We'll swing by the lake and then we'll go to the station. Okay? Custard. Oof. Mr. Wake, have you seen Stucky, the guy who owns this place? I realized I couldn't tell her what had happened in the forest. She He's wouldn't dead. believe me. And then she wouldn't have helped me with Alice. She bad guy, no? Oh, she took him back to the where his island was supposed to be. Ah, I see. Holy shit, that's like an episode. Or is that just like the uh, 